This use case is about the autonomous washer. Uh, so it's, this is a prototype of a washing machine. We have inside this uh, the software of the ADAPT architecture that Veena just explained to you. In the first use case, what we are going to show is that uh, the washer is going to say that the detergent is going low. It goes and checks out if there is a smart uh, contract in the background. And then it's going to go and place a request to the retailer that is being represented by a tablet over here. So you can see that the detergent low level is being detected here. It's, it's gone and checked the smart contracts in the background and it's placing an order. Yeah, so the, uh, the retailer has got this detergent reorder request with the device ID and the smart contract reference. So all this is being done on the blockchain. So now, uh, having got this request, what it's, uh, what's going to happen next is that uh, there's going to be a digital payment, again over the blockchain. So this, uh, this is a digital payment that has come in from the uh, washing machine directly to the retailer. So all this is again using the contract terms, assuming that the contract terms is defining what's the payment for each uh, detergent reorder. So what you're going to then see is that the, uh, there's an order acknowledgement that is going back to the washing machine. The washer has detected that the failing part is in warranty. The next step, what it's going to do is to check whether uh, who's the appropriate peer rated uh, service provider in the neighborhood. So uh, once it does that, it's then going to go and place the service request to that service vendor. So what you can see here is that washer has selected a service vendor and uh, it's then going to go and place the service request. The service vendor is going to get a request again from the washer asking for a part replacement. Yeah, so you can see here, look at the, uh, the, the, what's coming in here. So it's saying that there's a filter failing service request. There's a reference to the, uh, the device ID itself. And then there's a reference to the contract. Now what this retailer can do is that uh, independently he can verify that the warranty claim uh, that is being uh, cited by the washing machine is indeed valid. So that's what we're going to see here. The service vendor is going to go and check in the blockchain if the warranty status is correct and if whatever the, whatever that the washer is claiming is indeed valid. Yeah, so uh, the, the result is that the, wa the warranty is valid and then it's going to go and create a service order and it's going to be assigned to a service person. So once we do that here, you're going to see that uh, there's an acknowledgement of service confirmation that is going back to the washing machine. Adcast is kind of the screen sharing marketplace for advertisement. Its concept looks like this. Uh, if you have an LFD, it's a large format display, or it's a TV or any monitor, you can share the, this screen to the anybody. First step is to select LFD screens. I'm gonna choose the four screens. Paradise Hotel, Aloha Cafe, Chipos Cafe, and Las Vegas Inn. Next step is to choose the advertisement file. I'm gonna choose this one. And now the request is received from the advertiser by using the peer-to-peer telehealth -peer mechanism. Okay, it's a, look at this screen, it's a file is transferred. And then new file, new AD file is played. And also, the digital coin is paid from advertiser to LFT owner. Digital payment is done with the Ethereum, that is a blockchain protocol. Greetings from the IBM booth here at uh, CES in Las Vegas. My name is Veena Pureshwaran and I work for the Institute for Business Value at IBM. Uh, we're a small think tank and we lead thought leadership studies uh, around technology and business issues. Um, so I had the privilege and the honor of leading a study on the Internet of Things uh, late last year. Um, and our vision in that study was to decentralize the Internet of Things to address problems of cost, um, scalability, um, longevity of the Internet of Things as well as privacy and security issues. Um, and uh, the output of that study is uh, a proof of concept for the decentralization of the Internet of Things. And we are delighted to show you here uh, a working functional demo uh, in collaboration with Samsung um, to show two different sets of use cases demonstrating these ideas. So in order to achieve the functions uh, that would be supported by a traditional centralized Internet of Things uh, in a decentralized system, um, we, our architecture needed to support 
uh, three foundational functions. The first of them is uh, peer-to-peer messaging, um, secure, encrypted, trustless peer-to-peer messaging. And for this, we chose an open source protocol called Telehash to achieve that messaging. Um, then the second part is um, distributed file sharing um, for, for larger files, things like software, firmware updates, um, analytics reports, things like that. For that, we chose uh, BitTorrent, which is a, a much, uh, much more mature, uh, familiar uh, protocol. But the third and actually most challenging and interesting part of this uh, exercise um, is that in the absence of this centralized controller, we need some mechanism for device coordination. And uh, we, we got our inspiration for that from Bitcoin, uh, which is uh, obviously the, the, the best example we have of a decentralized uh, financial system. But um, we don't use the financial aspect of it itself. We use the, tech, the underlying technology platform, which is the blockchain. And in order to achieve um, device communication and device coordination and those transactions on the blockchain, um, we selected the Ethereum protocol, which works very nicely to do the contracting between devices um, so that devices can um, can create and set their own roles and responsibilities, uh, permissions, and uh, do uh, some fairly complex bartering and negotiations between themselves, uh, which which makes the devices almost completely auto autonomous. And in doing so, um, devices can become um, revenue generating opportunities in their own right. The ideas for this demo were inspired by the paper Device Democracy, uh, which you can find at ibm.biz slash device democracy. Um, and as you'll find, the, some of these ideas around decentralization of the Internet of Things are, are somewhat radical and uh, maybe even to some extent futuristic. But uh, in order to be credible in our uh, in establishing the thought leadership here, uh, we wanted to follow up the ideas uh, introduced in the paper with a proof of concept, um, so that these radical ideas are not dismissed, and we can actually demonstrate the credibility of these ideas and the feasibility of these ideas. And the idea here is that when you make um, these devices so autonomous in this decentralized Internet of Things, um, they become capable of transacting in marketplaces themselves. And this is something we described as a transformation of the Internet of Things into the economy of things. Most traditional Internet of Things um, architectures are very centralized and they are cloud-based, which means all interactions um, between the devices are through the cloud. Um, our approach is, uh, by decentralizing the Internet of Things, um, most communication is, peer actually all communication communication is peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, trustless and encrypted. Um, and our transactions are built on the blockchain, so they are um, secure, private and anonymous by design. So what this does is it shifts the uh, power in the network from the center to the edge or to the device them devices themselves. And this is an idea that we describe as device democracy, which means that it's a very democratic process. The devices and the owners and users themselves control uh, privacy and security. I'm Paul Brody from IBM. And I'm John Cohn from IBM. And I think we'd just like to say thanks for taking the time to watch this amazing demo. Uh, the technology that we've developed here is truly first of a kind, and it's been an amazing collaboration between IBM and Samsung. And I love the fact that the blockchain is going to be unlocking the value in everyday things. And we look forward to watch this space. Thanks very much.